Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Economic Sutra. In this episode, we will be exploring the Central Vista project. Now you may ask, why the Central Vista project on Economic Sutra? Well, there's a pragmatic reason for it. Uh, we are just a month away from the uh, union budget and the economic survey. So it's uh, difficult for me to uh, debate and discuss specific uh, policies. So I thought I'll take up a project that has, of course, been in the news. There's a lot of curiosity about it. So we will explore this uh, project, the Central Vista project. Um, we will, of course, be interviewing shortly architect Bimal Patel. Uh, but let me tell you a little bit about the wider uh, project, because you have to remember that this project is not just about rejuvenating um, this uh, particular road, which is the Rajpath, but more widely about um, uh, getting the uh, sort of infrastructure around it, whether it is the offices that are along the uh, spine of the Central Vista or um, rejuvenating uh, um, uh, the um, buildings on Raisina Hill, which will be done in the next phase, or building a new parliament. So uh, many of these things uh, we will discuss with uh, uh, Bimal Patel, but let me say that uh, this is uh, not just about this particular um, site. Uh, this is part actually of a wider uh, urban thinking that this government has brought um, it, uh, to the table. Um, in the older way of thinking, the focus tended to be about rigid master plans. The approach now is uh, to allow for much more fluid urban development, but then to do targeted interventions. So you have seen these kinds of interventions in other places as well. You saw, for example, the Kashi Vishwanath Temple, or you saw the interventions of the Smart City Project. Um, and in uh, the same mode, you have, of course, the Central Vista Project as well. Um, the idea basically is to m not just um, rejuvenate this place, but also to look after some of the older buildings, the iconic buildings that are there in these sites, um, and to uh, bring them up to speed with the 21st century. So, let's now have a chat with architect Bimal Patel. So, Bimal, thank you for making time for us on a cold winter morning to come here and speak to us. Um, so, welcome to uh, Economic Sutra. So, the first thing I'm going to ask you is not specifically about the spine of the Rajpath and the, and the works that you're doing right here, but more widely about the Central Vista project. I mean, whether it's the parliament or, you know, uh, the office buildings that you're going to uh, redo. So, tell us a little about the wider project and the philosophy behind it. Well, uh, you see, it has it, the, the project has multiple objectives. Uh, it's to it's meant to uh, improve infrastructure for governance. It's meant to improve public spaces uh, in Delhi, the, the prime public space of Delhi. It's meant to protect heritage. It meant uh, has also la larger objectives, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, but uh, uh, improving governance by improving the facilities for governance. So parliament, for example, uh, needed uh, uh, in, the, the facilities needed improvement. They've been talked about for a long time. And one of the one of the projects in the larger Central Vista project is to build a, a new 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 building for the parliament. Uh, another another project another um, aspect of this project is to build. Uh, uh, an executive enclave, a place where you can have the PMO, the NSCS, the CAPSEX office, so, so sort of a, a, a prime executive office uh, for this area. Also, all the ministries needed proper office infrastructure. And so there's a large portion of it is about building office infrastructure. Um, you know, this is all, all, all being done in a way that is uh, um, that, that makes uh, not just efficiency, but uh, environmental sense, etc. Uh, so that's improving infrastructure for improving governance. Uh, second is you have this prime public space in Delhi, the, where we are sitting uh, uh, just now, uh, and uh, it was in very it was in stressed condition. So improving this public space was a prime objective of this project uh, by giving it uh, simple facilities and upgrading it uh, in in many ways. Uh, 
toilets and pathways and um, the lawns needed in, uh, you know sprinklers simple stuff like that um, and, 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 and the paving had to be done things like that um, third objective is to protect heritage now all these wonderful buildings that we have the north block south block uh, um, the, the, the pa old parliament building uh, have been suffering because of unthoughtful additions, alterations, etc. And um, so, um, uh, including the archives, all of these are to be um, restored, retrofitted. So that's the la larger objective. And, and in some ways, uh, the objective there are there are other larger macro objectives to this project. Um, one is, uh, you know, one is a simple one to say. Uh, listen, many of these problems that we haven't tackled for decades need to be now taken on hand and tackled. And we have to, you know, complex as they might be, we must go ahead and deal with them, not just kick them, uh, kick the problem down the road, so to say, uh, which it, which which uh, we have been doing for, for years. Uh, uh, because all of these things have been crying out for attention since almost uh, 30, 40 years, no? Uh, so that's uh, that's an objective, saying, okay, India is, 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 is going to take these problems seriously and tackle them. The, the second objective is to say that we can do high quality projects uh, in time. I mean, you know, if, if we put, India, India doesn't have to do infrastructure, uh, you know, in a, you know, a delayed, all projects don't have to be delayed, you can show that it can be done. So, the, so one of the objectives to show this thing can be done. Uh, but perhaps the, perhaps the most important objective, uh, symbolically, of this project is to is to change the change the way in which this architectural iconography of this of this whole central vista that's the, the sort so of So I've heard you say often that it democratizes the space so in yeah. what sense does it do that Well you know what this as we can see we can see in the background here the north block and south block these were these were the the, the, the prime buildings of government of the raj uh, you know these were buildings that uh, uh, that that sort of or sit atop a, a hill. Uh, they are meant for government. Uh, they overlook the plain, so to say. So the people are down below, and the government is on top. Uh, this was the Raj. Our government took it on. We appropriated it, and the iconography remained the same. Instead of the British Sarkar, we had the Indian Sarkar. So it's looking all. Down. It was used to be all about the Raj looking down on the natives. Right. Well, that it was, and and then later on, it was the Indian government, sort of in a sense, uh, 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 occupying the the position uh, of, of eminence there. Um, well, uh, f what we are doing is turning, uh, government is coming down into the plains in a sense and, and, and these large uh, buildings are, are being turned into museums, so places of culture. So this is a very so important So this will now become an accessible space where common citizens can go Absolutely. and access those buildings, Absolutely. they can see a celebration of their civilization, culture, and so on. Uh, Absolutely, and it'll Absolutely. all be free and open. Well, that's that's that that's the that's the idea. Presently, all, all all that common people could do was to climb up the hill and gape at the buildings and and wonder what is going on inside. These were the or, sort or of put uh, petitions. <laughs> yeah, put to... petitions right, and and so it was sort of a all mysterious working of of government inside the these corridors buildings. Of yeah, power, yeah, so, yeah. To speak. so um, well in a sense now those buildings have uh, are, are easily accessible and and it's like it's like the Champs Elysees in, in, in so Paris. there was also these old buildings I mean there's a whole bunch of 1940s uh, old almost shanties you can call them that were still being used sometimes right. by senior officers that have been torn down new buildings being built uh, they're obviously uh, for those who have worked in some of these buildings on sh like Shastri Bhavan, etc., uh, they are getting torn down and they are being replaced by modern buildings. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so um, one important thing is, uh, you know, this uh, se se in the central waste, there's almost 40 or 50 acres of land in which originally they were, uh, you know, during the period of the Raj, they, they had built uh, barracks and stables and things like that. Right. Second World War urgency required these barracks to be built. So they were mainly used for by defense personnel, and and, uh, and 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 these were very very poor uh, spaces for work. But they continued being used as office, uh, office spaces for the defense uh, personnel, uh, officially referred to as hutments, by the way. 
Uh, now, 40 to 50 acres of prime center city space is uh, being used for purposes uh, by, uh, by for, 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 for a purpose that need not be in Central Vista. These people yes. could be working anywhere in Delhi. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, here we must have all the people who need to be here and need yes. to work with each other. So, uh, moving them into purpose-built buildings outside ended up uh, uh, creating 40-50 acres of space. And not far by the way, they have only yeah, gone no, to no, Kasturba Gandhi Mahal. Yeah, yeah, they have just gone a, a few kilometers down uh, north and south. And, 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 and so, you freed up suddenly 40 to 50 acres of land uh, that could be. Now, that made everything else possible. You could start moving things around. The right. vice president's residence could be moved, uh, a PMO could be created, uh, so on and so forth. Um, in addition to this, all the office buildings that were on the flanks of Rajpath were in very, very poor shape. They, they, they were built in the, in, you know, in a period when India was was suffering from scarcity, in a sense. Uh, you know, it's an architecture of that time. It's, uh, it's functional, it was, it, but yeah, not meant to last. But, but, but not meant to last and, 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 and uh, in a sense, it was also overstressed. So, right. like you mentioned, uh, officers working in awful conditions. I, I, I mean, I, nobody who has ever visited those buildings and had to work in them. Uh, Would ever lemon. defend yeah. <laughs> trying to keep them going. They absolutely don't uh, don't worry about the way. They, they in fact are very happy that they are being brought down and, 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 and new yes, buildings. Yes, and, and I think it's important here to emphasize that the iconic buildings on uh, Raisina Hill and some of the more iconic buildings are not being touched at all. They are being refurbished absolutely and not. redeployed in some cases. But they are not being demolished. It's really absolutely. the buildings being demolished are really the 1960s constructions like Shastri Bhavan, which were built up very hurriedly, or maybe the yeah. 1940s hutments yeah. that you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, the, the the buildings built during that period have not uh, have not survived well, and there are many reasons for this that one one can go into. Uh, they, you know, the, the buildings built prior to that, in a sense, the buildings built in my grandfather's time in in, right. in the in the 40s and 50s have lasted much better. The ones built in 60s and 70s are all crumbling across the country. This is not a problem just of Delhi. Yes. So we are not talking about some specific problem. There was a structural problem with the yes. building industry at that time. Um, any case, uh, some some marvelous architecture, but not robust buildings. Yeah. Um, I mean, so, this is a common problem with RCC yeah. uh, buildings across the country, and we need to kind of move beyond that. Yes, Sanjeev, it's not just it's not just RCC. It's 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 RCC of those times. Of those uh, times. Yeah, where, where it was uh, technologically, you know, we were trying to do things that were way beyond what our capacities were, and, and that is why those buildings are suffering. So let me uh, bring you specifically to the, this uh, Rajpath project, right. uh, and of course, it has to be ready in a few weeks' time for the Republic Day parade. Right. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, you know, these are these are magnificent. Uh, so, so what was Rajpath? Rajpath was this processional route that uh, Latians had planned. Uh, so, you know, this, this was uh, this was times of the Raj, huh? the, just in the way that uh, Champs Elysees and the Palace of the King at one side, or uh, Washington Mall. Uh, you have mm -hmm. a long axis uh, on which sort of approach uh, approach to the the central position of power at that time. This is how it was built. There are nodes along the way. There's a focal point, which is Rashtrapati Bhavan. There's a gateway at the other end, which is India Gate. So it was created as a processional route. And so flanking this this road, uh, this sort of uh, sort of route, uh, this processional route going up, uh, flanking it is 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 is, is vast gardens, mm. which we can see here in the surroundings now. And and and. Uh, all along in a, in a strict geometric order, you have planting of trees. So this is creation mm. of a big processional route that Latin said. It was, it was not meant to be a great public space at that time. Mm. There weren't that many people, mm. any case, to fill it up. Um, and, and then there are canals on uh, beyond the trees, which are also magnificent. Uh, so it's a formal garden for a processional route yes. that is being done here. And um, over the years, its use has changed. It has become an important civic space for the city. Yes. Uh, and 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 people of Delhi use it well. And uh, they have, uh, very, you know, everybody's from in Delhi, seem, you know, has been here. Uh, it, it's it's an intimate, important place for them. So it's 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 much cherished by by the people of Delhi. Uh, it's also a place for uh, national events like the Republic yes. Day Parade. Yes. So it has multiple functions. It's it's sort of a a place for national national events like Republic Day, uh, it's uh, you know, a, a great public garden, it's an iconic 
space for the government of India. Mm -hmm. In a sense, if if you if, if there is an architectural symbol for the government of India, it's 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 this whole. So what has area. changed when 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 you uh, open this in a few weeks time? Well, uh, what has changed? Well, nothing structural has changed uh, uh, here. Um, the street is there. The the gardens are there. All, all the trees are there. Uh, uh, the canals are there. Uh, and uh, so, uh, however, in some sense, everything has changed because what happens is uh, where we are, where we are s uh, sitting here just now uh, used to be a, a budgery path that was uh, kind of difficult to maintain. Uh, the, the the road was uh, you know a couple of lanes of asphalt, and then budgery path. There was no stormwater drainage in this area. Um, the the light uh, the iconic sort of um, light fittings that you see the light poles that you see the historic ones uh, were, were were the technology was outdated there uh, the bollards were poorly made cement bollards the chains were bad shape the lawns were in bad shape uh, all of this has been refurbished okay? okay all of this has been upgraded so what happens you have Rajpath uh, well that's that's a street it remains a street. Uh, the Bajri pathway has been paved with granite, um, which uh, sort of uh, takes the same color as the ones of the north and south block uh, buildings. Uh, below this is vast amounts of infrastructure so that the Republic Day parade can be held with more ease. You don't have to string cables all along for, for uh, television, for and uh, more for security, importantly, it won't be closed for the best months of the year because of Republic Day. Right, absolutely. You don't have you don't have to do so much to put up infrastructure. So the you know it you, Republic Day parade it used to take a long time to set up all the things and a long time to Unwind dismantle it, yeah. uh, everything. And, and now that whole point that that, that period is collapsed. So that in the best winter once uh, this garden can be enjoyed by people. Uh, well, you go further. You have the lawns. The lawns have been improved. Uh, um, the slopes are better. There is storm water drainage, so we don't have to, uh, you know, we don't have to worry about the lawns getting damaged every monsoon. Uh, there is a sprinkler system for watering. Um, the, you know, the, so there is uh, there's, there's more lighting. So the space has, in a sense, expanded because of the lighting. In some places, we've even pulled the compound wall, or, or are going back. to pull the compound walls back. So the public space actually increases. So e there are toilets. I mean, w simple stuff. Right. Uh, they, you know, people used to park on the street and then uh, use the lawns. Yes. Now they will park on the flanks and then, you know, cross the canals uh, by using the bridges that have been built over the canals. And I believe and you have side. now connected it all through with uh, pedestrian paths under the underneath the crossroads. Right. So there are there are cross streets and the the, the cross streets are uh, full of traffic and you know there's uh, you know particularly where you go near the sea hexagon you know mm -hmm. it's 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 terrible you see people trying to tourists trying to cross across and um, lots of traffic so they're just getting So do you think we should way. just pedestrianize the whole thing uh, maybe we can do Absolutely at some point you see what will happen eventually what will happen is when, when the hill okay has no government building Right. When, when the north and south block yes. become museums, right? Yes. Uh, and you have India Gate on this side. So there is no real need for any vehicles to ply a long Rajpath, Absolutely. except on Republic Day. Yes. <laughs> you know, when they when you have a parade, then you can take That's the right. tanks and everything across. So when these uh, buildings on the hill become museums, then the entire route mm -hmm. right from Rashtrapati Bhavan to India Gate can be completely pedestrianized. But that will happen in due course. Not everything has to happen overnight. Cities, uh, the things evolve. Uh, so that's how it will happen. So thank you, Bimal, for giving thank us an much. overview of this amazing project and uh, wish you all the best for this. Thank you. What I'm going to now do is to uh, invite some members of your team, including Falguni, to do a quick tour of some yeah. of the particular facilities that have been brought up. Excellent. And let me assure viewers that uh, no Jamun tree was hurt during the filming of this episode. Hi, we are at Rajpath. We are getting ready for the Republic Day Parade. I'll take you around and show you some of the new bits that have come up here. The first one being the new pathway. They, the pathways along Rajpath used to be Bajri. We now have uh, granite pathways laid here with uh, very proper and apt stormwater drainage that runs along the pathways to make sure that the water seeps in and goes through comfortably without harming the lawns, without uh, any water logging. Uh, the chains and bollards are right there as they used to be. We now have stone bollards and proper setups to 
link the chains to these bollards. Uh, the light poles are the same as they used to be. They've been refurbished to make sure that they can take uh, new and modern tech and gear with updated lights. We have arrangements that have been made for the Republic Day Parade with all cables and facilities that are actually going underground with clear manholes to access them. Uh, it'll be much easier to set up uh, the parade and uh, put in all the equipment, the tech, the wiring and the cabling that's required for it. All the tech and the gear has been added uh, to the light poles itself for easier access. Uh, we have cross paths that are uh, running perpendicular to Rajpath to ensure uh, a better connectivity of all areas uh, and the lawns and the canals. Uh, they'll, they, uh, they'll make sure that you don't have ball patches in the lawns, that people are able to comfortably walk on these pathways. The lawns also have been refurbished and relayed to ensure that we have uh, better water uh, drainage, we have better slopes, that the lawns are green at least as much as possible throughout the year. We'll have proper signage on the site to make sure that wayfinding is easy for people. These are the structures that are coming up. We'll have them up very soon before the parade. Uh, we also have pathways that are running parallel to the canals to ensure that people can have leisurely walks along the water. Uh, there are also some benches in the background if you can see. Uh, those are seatings along the lawns and the canals. Permanent bridges that are built over the canals to ensure that uh, Rajpath all the way to the back of the lawns and the area after the canals is accessible. They are in line with the pathways to ensure continuity in walking for all pedestrians. We have these pathways that are set up, uh, that are running parallel to the canals to ensure that people can have a leisurely walk by the water. There are uh, benches like these at regular intervals to make comfortable seatings for all the visitors who come here. Uh, we are going to have some amenity blocks that uh, will have access like these where you have open air ramps and a courtyard that it opens into from where you will have basic amenities like toilets. We are going to have pairs of four on each side of Rajpath, so eight amenity blocks. So friends, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Economic Sutra. As you can see, a lot of work is going on here to be ready for Republic Day. So see you on the other side of this on the next episode of Economic Sutra on Sunset TV.